Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I was uploading my morning video, and then this came across in Pro Football Talk. Mike Farella. Mike Farella, who was supposed to be on the fan this morning, um, talking about the Dak Prescott case where the police um, basically said there's no there there as far as that case goes, has gone on this morning to talk about the Dak Prescott situation where they basically, he's basically saying that the Dallas Cowboys are playing hardball with Dak Prescott because they don't believe that he's going to go anywhere. Um, now, mind you, I will say with Mike Farello, um, take everything with a grain of salt. Actually, take it with a pile of salt. Um, this is the same guy that did come out with the Des Bryant. Might be a tape out there that's ten times worse, or excuse me, five times worse than Ray Rice. And um, to this day, that tape has not been there. So let's kind of, you know, just take this for what it is. But let's listen to the discussion here on this. Shall we? Or maybe we shan't. Stop me if you've heard this before. Dak Prescott recently talked about his lack of a contract extension. Look, until he gets a new contract with the Cowboys, it is going to be topic number one or close to it anytime he speaks, anytime Jerry Jones speaks. And this is very simple when you break it down. He had the Cowboys over a barrel three years ago. They signed a contract that was inevitably going to put them even more over a barrel, entering the fourth year of it. I said at the time, because Patrick Mahomes had just mm -hmm. signed his long-term deal, Dak signs four years, 160, when you consider the structure and the other pieces of it that make it harder for the Cowboys to force him to stay after this year. They can't tag him after this year. He's a free agent. He hits the market after this year. His deal was better. Because if you're a quarterback, you want to get back to the table sooner rather than later. Mahomes signed like a 12-year contract. Four years, and he's back. Yep. And he's got all the leverage. And the Cowboys, I think, have decided we're not going to give him top-of-the-market money. We'll give him another year to show what he can do, and then we'll make because our offer of he's done nothing. and let him go hit the market. And if he wants to go make more somewhere else – fine and not be the quarterback of the cowboys fine i think they believe that someone else is going to have to offer him a wow. lot more to get him to go that at the end of the day he'll choose to stay in dallas choose to continue to be the quarterback of the cowboys because that opens the doors to waltzing right into a booth and being number one analyst at one of the networks we've seen it happen time and again troy aikman yep. tony romo <laughs> Jason Witten got a chance on Monday Jason Night Football because seem of his to connection to the Cowboys. I mean, it's all Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. And I, I think that they're, they're going to dare him to walk away from that after this season. And that, that's why I think they don't even need to talk about it anymore. We know what it is. They're not going to do a new contract. They're going to wait until after the season. He's going to get close to the open market, you know, get into that negotiating window. And we're going to find out what else is out there. And he's going to find out what else is out there or what else is not out there. And uh, the Cowboys think he'll come back. And if not, they'll go find a new quarterback. Yeah, easier well, said than done. They're going to have to find a new coach, too, presumably, right, if things don't go well this year for Mike McCarthy in the last year of his contract. So that's going to be another factor in all of this. Who is the head coach next year? Is that head coach offensive slash quarterback friendly, right? Are they going to be able to call the plays and all this different kinds of stuff? What is this thing going to look like? What is this season going to look like mm -hmm. for Dak Prescott, who had a really good year last year with Mike McCarthy calling the plays until they got to the postseason and absolutely peed down their leg, both legs, really. I mean, it was just urine everywhere on the wow. Cowboys field, basically. Okay. So, like, that's where you can look at it and I don't you know can how say, you all right, I don't – Damn. Maybe after sleeping like 10 hours, both you legs. can manage to pee down both legs. That just takes a pretty full bladder, I think. Well, did they I mean, not? I mean, they got that the That means you kind of like lean on one side, and then you got to roll and over. And then they like, I they mean, just pee the bed. They pooped the bed. Like, they were like, they just pooped the bed. That's a simple line. Really? Fuck. I guess I've been sitting here. They pooped the bed. Absorbing some of, oh, okay, well. Seriously? You know, I try not to say the are bad. 
anyway, I just, I feel like this is an interesting year, obviously, for Dak Prescott. And, you know, other than Kirk Cousins, I don't know that any quarterback has been able to sort of play the business of football game. Let's call it better than Dak Prescott. At Who is this guy? In the last 10 years, because I mean, like... He's always in the conversation when it comes to his contract. And part of that was that, you know, he was a fourth round pick. So you don't have the fifth year option, you know? And then he's had success, but not that much success in the playoffs. So it's kind of like, well, he's As one of these to Lamar Jackson, in who's two and four, mid to upper tier. Or Justin Herbert, who's I don't know that anybody would consider Dak Prescott elite. And or that's where Jalen the Hurts is two and three. In, because do you want to pay him like an elite quarterback? I don't know. Would anybody else pay him like an elite quarterback? I don't know. So, oh, yeah, you're just an idiot. In a lot of ways, Bro. it does make sense for Bro. Cowboys to play this out Bro. over the course of 2024. Okay, hold on. That's the issue. Wait a minute. Kirk Cousins got paid $45 million and they ended up drafting a quarterback in the first round. See, this is where you're just playing stupid and just a straight-up hater. True, though. And, you know, guys will get contracts that pay them as elite quarterbacks because of their circumstances not necessarily because of their overall ability relative to others. And you look at Mahomes taking the long-term deal. You look at at Josh Allen taking the long-term deal. Josh Allen's woefully underpaid right now. He did the long-term deal. What's he going to do about that? He's kind of stuck now. Dak Prescott, because the Cowboys dragged their feet after his third season, when he was entering his contract year because he wasn't a first-round pick, they didn't pay him then. And then they didn't pay him the next year they did the one year of the franchise tag and even though he broke his ankle in very ugly and graphic fashion he was healed he was healthy and in lieu of tagging him again although they did have to burn the second tag which makes it even harder and more impossible for them to tag him next year that's when they did this long-term deal which was only four years 160. that was the key to get them to agree but they knew they were stuck because they were looking at the following year a 44% increase over his franchise tag for his second year of the tag, which was a 20% bump over the first year. The numbers get astronomical quickly. And that's why we should see more quarterbacks engineering this to their advantage. I talked about this not that long ago, where one of these guys eventually is going to come into the NFL and say, you know what, I am treating this like the NBA. A quarterback can do it because the wear and tear, the rules are set up so you're not banged up. And after seven years, if you're a first-round pick, potential franchise quarterback you can say all right four years in you're offering me a contract don't want it fifth year option all right i finished that you're offering me a long-term deal instead of franchise tag don't want it tag me tag me again you're not going to tag me a third time seven years and i can go wherever i want seven years whoever it is any of these guys this year if caleb williams only wants to do seven years in chicago he can go if Jaden daniels only wants to do seven years in washington he can go one of these years, okay. one of these days, one of these guys is going to do it. We talk about the NBA, NFL parallels all the time. That's a way for a quarterback who would still be in his early prime, 28 years old. I'm gone. I go wherever I want. Mahomes could have done it. Mahomes would have been there right now, seven years in. Is he seven years in? 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two. He's eight years in. He could have done it a year ago. But one of these guys is going to do it. One of these days, okay. seven one years of these in, days. and off I go. One of these days. You know, Cousins really didn't have a choice. One of these He's days. He's got a $20 million franchise tag, and they offered him $16 million a year. What the hell was he going to do? Take a long-term offer? No. Prescott's kind of engineered it. And think about next year. You got him. We talked about this earlier in the week. Tua, mm-hmm. yep. Jared Goff, all three potentially walk into the yep. market. And what's somebody else going to pay him? Is anybody going to roll out the green carpet for any of those three guys and grossly overpay them? Especially – based upon how this Kirk Cousins experiment goes. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not even close to 100% sure. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm just, you know, this is the thing I'll say. In the course of him getting his deal, him getting his deal, in the time that he's played quarterback thus far, he's had 96 TD passes, 34 interceptions, and averages about a 103 quarterback rating. And during that time, you got rid of Cedric Wilson, Amari Cooper, Zeke Elliott, and the offensive line has been an upheaval. I'm not sure how much more we're looking uh, that 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 we're going to get. I mean, I know it's the playoff success, but 
you got to get everybody on board too. They can't just be just Dak. But then again, you know, I'm just accused of being a Dak Prescott fanboy and, you know, that's my son and this, that, and the other and all that. But I'm telling you people that if you think that you're going to get a guy who's going to come in and throw 23, 24 TDs and, you know, 16, 17 interceptions and that we're going to win the Super Bowl, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I see we brought in Trey Lance, but they don't believe enough in to say, you know, we're going to let Dak walk and put the fifth-year option on him. It's not easy getting quarterbacks. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo.